Greetings, everybody. I am Lobo, and welcome to Luna. This is episode 179 of my Minecraft survival series, and in between episodes, I have a lot of time to kind of wander around, you know, plan out what I'm going to do in the next episode, plan out, like, future projects, and also do some maintenance on old projects, because this stuff does require maintenance. Luna is not a maintenance-free place. For instance, I had to come over here to the far approach to the Luna Ferry Terminal and fix some lightning damage, which I had thought I fixed previously, but no, there was a lot more lightning damage than I originally thought, like, half the back of this roof here had burned down, so I had to make some repairs there. But not only that, um, I finally got around to fixing some of the lightning damage over at the business district as well, on the enchanted pickaxe roof, on the timberland tree farm roof. Yeah, apparently Luna's like one big lightning rod. It's terrible. Anyway, when the next update comes out, we'll get like actual lightning rods, which will be awesome because my city, my buildings and my structures will stop acting as lightning rods and, you know, combusting at each thunderstorm. Uh, but additionally, I did some some preparation for today's project. I spent some time over here at the Waterside District collecting some acacia because we are going to be working over at Wharf today. Now, the beautiful thing about working over at Wharf, which is, of course, our guardian farm, is that it's, it's pretty much self-building. Not self-building, but, like, it provides its own resources because the majority of it is actually made of prismarine. But I do have little bits of acacia sprinkled in there, so uh, that's needed. So here we are at Warf, the ow, <laughs> the Wolfen's Aquatic Research Facility. And as I said, we're going to be hitting this place pretty hard in the coming episodes uh, because there's not actually a whole lot left to do here. Um, I just wanted to turn off the the turbocharged kelp harvester, uh, you know, because it does cause some issues <laughs> recording. It gets a little crazier sometimes with that going at full speed. So over here at Wharf, we have our Guardian Farm, we have our Sea Pickle Farm, and we have our Kelp Farm so far. But the Kelp Farm's not being used to its fullest potential. So in this center section of Wharf right here, I want to add a new system to the Kelp Farm. Uh, because right now we're just storing, like, we have a storage system for regular kelp. We have a system for converting regular kelp into bone meal using this composter over here. And as far as getting dried kelp blocks, I kind of just throw them into a furnace and manually smelt them myself. But that's not going to work for me. So what I want to do in this center section is make a kelp smelting system to more quickly and efficiently create dried kelp blocks, get a nice renewable source of energy for Luna, and kind of move away from the coal. Oh, yeah, Wharf's so great. Provides all its own resources. I just have to get acacia. Negative. Forgot about the Blackstone. So let's talk about what we know and what we don't know about how this project is going to go. So I know basically what I want the, the building to look like. I've drawn up some plans, uh, and I have a good idea of how I want this thing to actually look. I don't really know how we're going to do the kelp smelter yet. I don't know how big it's going to be. I know that we're probably going to have plenty of room to fit it inside the building I plan to make because I intend for it to be fairly large. And by large, I mean I want to add some vertical height to this so that way we can fit all the systems inside this building that we need without having anything protrude out like this is because I tried to keep things kind of smushed down. I wasn't sure how tall I actually wanted this building at first, but uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to leave some room for ourselves to work this time. Now, as far as what we've already got built in here, this, this item filter is kind of sticking out past where our wall is going to be. But I think we can smush it into the corner here without doing any any damage to it. I think that should still be operational. Yeah, that, that should be fine. And then we can then we can actually get a wall up here. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and talk you through my plans for this building. We're going to have the kelp smelter located on the second floor interior of this building. And I'm raising where I plan to put the second floor up a little bit since I know we're going to have some vertical height. We're going to have some room for it. Now, as far as the exterior of this building goes, what I want to do is basically put like an outer shell on this building. So we'll have like a shell going around it kind of up then down. And then in the center of that protected is going to be like the main part of the building, right? So outer shell and then this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense but hopefully it will once you see it start being built. And I think we are just about ready to get started building because, as I said, I have a plan. It's just a matter of seeing if we can make that plan reality, right? Or not really reality, but you know what? Forget it. Uh, we have Decoy Dog over here. That's the great thing about having our robot. He's just, like, right here next to us when we need him. You're, you're waterproof, correct? It's kind of pouring out here, yeah? Okay, good. Water resistant. That, that's fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and put on a little bit of music and get to work.
Welcome back, everybody. Warf is coming together. Check it out. Warf is coming together. We've got a huge chunk of it done today as far as looks go. Uh, let me go ahead and get over here a little bit so I can show you the shape of this building, kind of show you the shell I was talking about, all that stuff. So looking at it from this side, you can kind of see how, you know, that whole thing works out. Uh, now, that being said, not a whole lot of this is going to be visible, like clearly visible, once we actually get Warf done. Because remember, we are going to have some structures over here on this side as well. So it's going to be a lot like this as we walk around Warf. You know, you can look up and just see the height of it, see, you know, get a feel for it. But a lot of the details are going to be kind of hidden. And I think that's good. I think this is a good thing for this build in particular because there's a, it looks like there's a lot of stuff going on here. And there is supposed to be a lot of stuff going on here. This is Wolfen's Aquatic Research Facility. Of course, there's research going on, production going on. Uh, oh, I built these like little pillars in here connected to the shell structure that kind of tie it into the other buildings, kind of make it look like it's one one piece, right? That's what I want. So this is going to do the same thing on this side as well. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm overall fairly happy with how this turned out. Let me go ahead and make my way over here so you can get an idea of what it looks like when structures are actually built around it. Like, it's not completely hidden. It's not invisible or anything. You can kind of see the structure peeking out. And this is more or less what I was envisioning when I was envisioning Wharf. So I'm happy we were able to make that happen. Uh, but yeah, now it's time to move on to the next phase of this project. And the next phase of it is the interior, of course, and this is where we're going to be smelting our kelp. And as you can see, we got lots of ventilation here for the kelp smelter because I anticipate, you know, smelting tons and tons of kelp is going to create a lot of heat, right? So we can't have this place getting too hot, too toasty for the villagers, the workers over here at Wharf, which are mostly going to be, I guess we're going to have like an upper floor for them. That's going to be kind of like where they can hang out, right? And while I'm getting the floor plan in, I guess it would make sense to turn our kelp harvester onto high speed mode. That way we can start getting this warmed up, start building up a supply and see what the capacity of our smelter needs to be. Now, we're not going to be utilizing all the space available to us in this main building right here. Like, as you can see over here, there's going to be a lot of unused space, and I'm going to leave it unused for now because, you know, in the future, there might be other aquatic-based farms we might want to add to Wharf. There might be other stuff that Wolfen's Laboratory might want to look into. So basically, I want to leave some room for future expansion. Ah, oh, classic Lobo. I figured out why we have such issues after a while of running the kelp smelter at high speed. It's because uh, we're, we're throwing tons and tons of kelp into a hopper that can't actually pick it up fast enough and put it in the composter. Like, yeah. And, and we got ink sacks in there as well for some reason. Yeah, so uh, that that's one mystery solved. Maybe it would be a good time to go ahead and pump the brakes on our harvester, at least until we have a system that can actually handle the output. And because when our regular kelp storage system is full, all the excess kelp gets diverted over here to bone meal, I think this would be the best place to, to gather our excess kelp to smelt, right? So it'll get placed into this dropper right here, and then we can take it all up to be smelted, and we won't have to worry about any excess being built up. Now, I'm not 100% sure how many smokers we're going to need for our smelter because this is going to be a variable system, right? When kelp is getting diverted to kelp storage or to bone meal, we're going to get less kelp coming through. When those things are full, we're going to get like all the excess kelp coming through here. And I want a system that's going to be able to handle that without making a backup and, and letting kelp just kind of sit on top of hoppers because that causes issues, as we know. So I think we're going to run the test for our smelters in place. So basically, I'm just going to get our water stream set up, get kelp flowing into the system. If we need more than eight smokers, we'll add more than eight smokers. If we don't need eight smokers, we'll take some out. Oops. All right. So once we add this soul sand bubble elevator in here, that should be it for the water streams. Now all the kelp will make its way to the smelting area. And I think we're ready to commence testing. So first, we're going to need some dry kelp blocks in order to prime the system to make more dried kelp blocks. And eventually, I'm going to have a centralized input for the fuel. But for right now, we're just going to place these into each of the smokers individually, you know, just for testing purposes. All right, let's kick this thing back up into high gear and see how it does. I probably should have capped this off earlier so we don't have airborne kelp going everywhere, but uh, I think that's going to be fine. Uh, so now it's just a matter of waiting and just seeing, you know, how this system does as the kelp starts to build up here. Get in there! Okay. I found another flaw in my design. As you can see, we're actually, we have kelp backing up into the dropper. Uh, it's, it's slowly building up, but it is still building up, so this clock is not fast enough, and I have used this clock 
pretty much everywhere for item transportation in this place. So what we might have to do is convert these over into observer clock systems, which are considerably faster. All right, so we'll do this right here, and it already sounds like it's going a bit faster. Let's see if it's actually emptying out. Yeah, there we go. That That's, that's much better. That's much better. Okay. Same thing goes for back here. This is actually a pretty significant backup. You know, what's funny is I thought this system was pretty, uh, pretty productive previously. And then I've realized now it's actually far more productive than I gave it credit for. I just, I, I vastly underestimated it. All right. So there is another clock sped up. Let's go ahead and make sure that that's sufficient to get all the kelp moving through here smoothly. So yeah, basically every clock I used in the initial design of this thing is just insufficient, which explains so, so much. So now we should be good. Hopefully this means we won't have to deal with items sitting around and, and building up faster than they can despawn, much faster than they can despawn, right? Now, something else we have to account for is the fact that our bone meal system right here, this is eventually going to fill up completely and it's going to start sending all the kelp to the smelter. So we need to go ahead and simulate that to make sure our smelter can handle all that incoming kelp. So if we lock this hopper right underneath our composter right there, that should start backing kelp up into the composter, backing bone meal up into the composter, uh, which means that once the hopper above the composter gets filled up, all the kelp will start making its way into the smelter water stream, the smelter input. And there we go. Now that this hopper is filled up and now after fixing several of my mistakes earlier, uh, we can see how much kelp actually is going to be going into our kelp smelter system at any one time. Currently, as it stands, without, uh, without any of that stuff done, we were sitting at about three smokers, right? Now let's see how many more it's going to take. So as it stands, we're sitting at 10 smokers right now, and we are getting a little bit of a backup into this smoker, but it's a slow backup. It's a slow kind of almost steady backup. So I don't anticipate much more than that. So maybe to even this out, we'll add another two smokers onto this side just to kind of keep it symmetrical in the room. And that would give us a total of 12, which I think should be sufficient to cover our needs. Oh, and if you're curious about the rates so far, this is about what we're pulling in with the 10 smokers we got so far. You can see how fast the dried kelp is coming in, uh, which is pretty good in my opinion. All right, so let me go ahead and update this, update the water streams to accommodate our two additional smokers. And already, already these guys are just about filling up, which is, which is cool. Uh, we also have a creeper up there. I have no idea where he came from, but he cannot be up there because that's all very fragile and he, he's very destructive. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can figure out where he actually came from. Now, this is all glass. Wait. Oh, he came from, okay, he came, he came from upstairs. Uh, let me go ahead and put some torches down up there. All right, so next steps. Next steps, we're going to need a storage system for all the dried kelp that's coming through. I think we're gonna put that on probably this wall over here. And we'll also have a crafting area to make uh, dried kelp blocks and probably put our fuel input over here somewhere as well. Uh, and as far as this side goes, this area, as I said earlier, I'm leaving this open in case we build anything here in the future. We wanna have some real estate available. Uh, but dried kelp block storage will probably go on this wall over here. This whole area back here is just going to be a mess. It's going to be a huge jumbled mess. But as I've said many times, if you're looking for elegant, compact redstone and also the ability to, to actually maneuver in this game, you can't find that on this channel. But at least up front, everything is going to look fairly clean because, you know, most of our dried cup storage is located in the back here. But all these chests filter into one another. So it's going to look like this one chest right here is the only output for our dried kelp, which is fairly clean looking, right? So then we can take our dried kelp out of here, craft it into our dried kelp blocks right here, and put it into our fuel input, which is going to be right here, feeding down into a dropper, which will shoot items into a water stream, feeding into each of our smokers here. Now I am going to make the water stream that feeds into our storage system for the dried kelp fairly tall. That way, in case we do need to add any more chests to increase our storage capacity, we will be able to do that in the future. Now, additional systems I will be adding in here for safety, item disposal systems, of course, just in case I can't keep up with the production, in case I, you know, can't craft the blocks fast enough or neglect to because I'm doing other stuff. And we might have that actually trigger another safety system, which will either put the kelp harvester into low power mode or maybe just shut it off entirely so that way we're not getting a build up here. Oops. 
And this should be it for our kelp block delivery system. So that should begin shooting kelp blocks in the water streams that will bring them up into the fuel inputs for each of our smokers. This, by the way, this whole system is just ridiculous. Like it's just convoluted and ridiculous. But the way I can justify it is by saying all this stuff, this is what's powering Luna. This is what will be powering Luna in the future. All right, let me go ahead and check out our workflow real quick. So this is obviously the dried kelp output. So we'll go ahead and throw a bunch of this into our inventory. Crafting table is right next to that. We can convert those into dried kelp blocks and then put those into the fuel input for the smokers. Now, eventually that will get filled up and a light will come on alerting us that we don't need any fuel for the smokers anymore. Uh, so we can start crafting up dried kelp blocks to bring over to Luna either as fuel or for building purposes, really. I Excuse me. All right, so I've got my warning lights hooked up. I've got them labeled. I'll kind of go through them a little bit later and tell you what they mean. Um, I've also got the kelp block storage system in, which is just like kind of a manual system. I'll put stuff away manually because I can't justify the use of any more hoppers. But at this point, I am in the mood to go ahead and get started building the interior. Now, I just need to figure out where decoy dog's gone to. I told him to stay close to me, uh, but oh my goodness. Have you been behind me this whole time? Okay, well, good job staying close, I guess. We need to go ahead and put on some music and get to work. Welcome back, everybody. We have the central building of Wharf now done, and it feels good. It feels good to have a little bit of Wharf now complete. Uh, you guys have already seen the outside, so we'll go ahead and take a quick tour of the inside. Of course, the first thing we come up to, coming up these stairs, is our kelp smelting room. And this is, this is it. It looks so much cleaner than that mess back there. So it doesn't really give you an idea of how convoluted all the redstone and item transportation is back there. Uh, we're sitting pretty consistently around 10 smelters running. We'll probably get up to 11. I doubt 12. That extra one is mostly just there for safety. But these are putting dried kelp out at a pretty good rate, uh, as you guys have seen. Now, as far as fueling our system goes, you can see we got full stacks of dried kelp blocks in each of these smokers, which means we've got all the reserves, the hoppers behind them full as well. And I think it's pretty much all of them at this point. Or I spoke too soon. No, it looks like these two haven't had the overflow into them yet. So we will need a few more dried kelp blocks to actually get this system fully fueled. But we can do that. And then we can start stockpiling those dried kelp blocks for Luna, for building, for other fueling purposes and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is the room where all of that happens, right? And the, 
design of it, it's pretty consistent with the rest of the wharf interiors. Not too much variation, just trying to keep things relatively cohesive. Of course, things change from building to building, you know. Uh, but up here on the top floor, the third floor, the top floor, this is a lounge area for the workers at wharf. We'll eventually get some villagers in here. And they come up here after a hard day's work, kind of enjoy the view. You can see Luna off in the distance. You can see some other stuff around here. Uh, you got some pretty good views from this area, so I think they're really going to appreciate this. This area over here, it's kind of decorated a little bit sparsely, you know? Uh, and there's a reason for that. It's because there may be some repurposing happening later on because uh, we do have a lot of room over here. We have a lot of room in the various areas inside this central building to actually do some other stuff. And we may, I don't have any ideas as of yet, but I'm kind of, you know, anticipating that there will be other stuff that we do here eventually. Uh, another thing we have up here accessible from the lounge is our maintenance area. And from here, we can make our way back into the the inner workings of our kelp smelting area. We can kind of check on our storage system, just see how everything's running. We can check on our excess, the overflow, and as you can see, it's backing up into this second chest right here. So I can kind of keep an eye on it. You can see it's still filtering into that first chest. So it does filter at about the same rate it comes in, if not a little bit quicker, just a tiny bit quicker. So hopefully we don't get too much of a backup here, especially if we now and then just kick the farm into low power mode, which reminds me, I still need to put in my emergency stopping mechanisms. I will get around to that eventually. Hopefully, if I don't mention it again, that probably means I forgot, so I may need to be reminded. So just keep an ear out, would you? Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the interior of this building, at least for the upper floors. There's, of course, one more floor, and that's leading down into the maintenance area and our nether portal down here. It looks like it's done. It's, it's not really, you know, too dressed up. Uh, but we can access it through this. I do have a piece of redstone, a redstone line running above this, so that way both doors open once you push one button, so I think that's fairly convenient. The uh, reason why I put iron doors here is because we're going to have villagers roaming around here. They'll be able to access most of these areas, but maintenance areas and stuff like that, I want to keep blocked off, so we're going to keep iron doors to prevent them from getting down into these areas over here. Oh my goodness. Why do you, why do you insist on using that particular audio cue? Would you prefer I speak? Oh. Whoa. You can talk? Can, can you can you make your voice sound less threatening? Do you find this preferable? Oh, no, no. I have to choose between those two. I think I, I think I choose the first one. As you wish. All right. Wow. Decoy dog can talk. I have somebody to carry on conversations with. This is amazing. Wolfred, the technology, the technology you built in this guy. I am. I am just so, so impressed. Wow, craziness. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and reactivate our bone meal production. We can also get rid of the item disposal system after bone meal production. So that way, uh, you know, any excess kelp doesn't go to get destroyed. It goes to the smelter. And I'll also go ahead and install that emergency shutoff system. So disregard what I told you guys earlier about reminding me. And you know what? It's a good thing we came back here because you remember those two smokers that didn't have fuel going into them? Well, that's because I put the hoppers in the wrong way. Wow. But now that we've got that sorted out and I am currently just finishing up running the automatic shutoff system, we should be good and we shouldn't have to worry about an overflow of kelp. All right, so I think we're just about finished here. Now, I did tell you I would tell you what all the lights and the labels mean, and I'm just all over the place right now, so I do apologize. But this is our kelp input light. Basically, when the kelp input's filled up, this light's going to come on, letting us know that we're automatically reducing the speed of the farm. Now, there's no light to indicate the emergency shutoff, but basically when our storage system up there gets too full, that's going to shut off the farm completely. And we have our fuel storage light as well. So basically when this light comes on, we know we don't put any more fuel in these smokers. Now, we do still need to fill up this last smoker. So that light is currently off. We have our dried kelp output light. So basically once it starts getting backed up, we're going to reduce the speed of the farm before cutting it off. I know, convoluted, right? Super convoluted. Uh, kelp block input. Basically this light is the same thing as this light. Those are both connected to each other. They mean the exact same thing. But yeah, I think that is going to be it for us today. I need a break, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to hit that little thumbs up button. That would mean a whole lot to me. And if you want to see more, please remember to subscribe. But as always, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, I am Lobo, and I will see you guys later.